This computer chip works with light instead of electricity. It is said to consume 30 times less energy and be up to 50 times faster than conventional chips. It was developed by the startup Quant from Stuttgart in Germany. And it's the first commercially available photonic chip, which is a big breakthrough. It has been available for purchase since the end of 2024, built into a photonic processor. We took a closer look at the whole innovation and spoke to the CEO of Quant. And I can already reveal that this technology is it's really promising and very exciting. So let's find out what's really behind the development, what the advantages of photonic chips are, and whether our computers will soon be running on light. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Botton, and in Germany we say Los geht's. In 2022, data centers worldwide consumed 340 to 440 terawatt hours of electricity. For comparison, that's more electricity than all wind turbines in the European Union produced in 2023. So it is a lot, but to be accurate, we also have to set it into perspective. According to the information servers of the German Economic Institute, data centers accounted for just 1% of total global electricity consumption in 2023. But by 2030, that figure could rise to 4.5%. In other in other words, it could more than quadruple within seven years. Hey ChatGPT, what could be the reason for this? Okay, so the startup Quant from Stuttgart in the south of Germany is working on a technology that could make such data centers significantly more energy efficient and powerful. Photonic computer chips. We had the opportunity to talk to Michael Furch, the CEO of Quant. He told us what's behind these chips and what you can expect from them in the future. But first, let's take a closer look at the chips. These electronic chips can be found in virtually every cell phone and computer, for example, as processors. In short, they contain small but very complex circuits. The chips consist of a semiconductor, such as silicon. Transistors are then attached to the semiconductor, which are also semiconductors and can be used to control electronic signals. So in the end, they are simply switches. These transistors are then connected to each other, and if these transistors are then interconnected in the right way, complex calculations can be performed, for example, in a computer or a cell phone. Such computer chips work digitally. This means that they use two states for computing, true and false, or one and zero. And that is actually a big difference from Quant's photonic chips. We'll get to how exactly that works in a moment, but first things first, let's take a closer look at how photonic chip works in general. In short, photonic chips work with light instead of electricity, so with photons instead of electrons. To do this, laser pulses with different intensities and wavelengths are used, for example. Instead of transistors, optical elements are used, with which light can be manipulated. For example, lenses that split light into individual frequencies or objects that scatter light. And information can be stored in light waves in many different ways. To do this, the properties of waves are used. For example, the amplitude, so the height of the wave, the phase shift, which is the relative position of the wave to each other, or the polarization, which is the direction of oscillation of the wave. By specifically changing these properties, information can be stored and calculations can be performed. According to Michael Furch, waves also interfere, which means they kind of overlap. And each wave is, so to speak, a mathematical function and this overlap results in a new function. According to Furch, the interference pattern that arises when the waves overlap is then the result of the calculation. So again for a comparison. In electronic chips, transistors serve as a kind of switch that regulates the flow of electricity in a targeted manner. This allows calculations to be performed. In optical chips, light is used instead and its properties are specifically altered. However, it is important to note that light is only used for calculations on the chip. The data, which comes from a memory for example, is initially electrical. The electrical signal must therefore be converted into an optical signal. And even after the calculation on the chip, the data is converted back into an electrical signal. But calculating with light already has a number of advantages. While electronic chips work digitally, so in principle with the two states, 0 and 1, photonic chips work analog. This means that they use a continuous signal, which means more states than 0 and 1. And that is a major advantage. Values in nature are usually analog as well. They do not change in steps, but continuously. One example is temperature. It's not 15 degrees in one moment and 20 the next moment, but rather the temperature rises continuously. Image and audio information are also analog at first. If you don't convert them into a digital signal, you also save energy. 
Michael Furch says, for example, in order to calculate with mathematical functions, you have to translate the functions into zeros and ones in digital form. This requires a relatively large amount of space on the electronical chip. However, this information is already naturally contained in light, which saves a lot of space while delivering the same performance. Im analogen Rechnen ist es so, dass die Grundfunktion, deswegen, deswegen nennen wir es übrigens auch natives Rechnen, nativ im Licht vorhanden ist. Und damit spare ich mir sehr viel Rechenfläche auf dem Chip ähm, und habe damit eine höhere Rechendichte erzielt. The information used for computing is already contained in the properties of light, for example in its amplitude. And these properties can be easily changed, for example, with lenses. Computing is then performed by superimposing the light waves and reading the results from the resulting wave. For the sake of completeness, however, it must be said that even with electrical signals, analog calculations are possible in principle. However, this has a major disadvantage. Aber Strom hat viel zu viel Rauschen bzw. lässt sich nicht präzise genug steuern. Deswegen werden die analogen Rechnungen im Elektrischen sehr fehlerbehaftet. We have already discussed how analog computing saves energy. One of the most important points here is that photonic chips do not require cooling. This makes them extremely energy efficient. The difference is that in electronical chips electricity flows, which means there's also resistance. Widerstand ist immer ein Zeichen auch für Wärme, deswegen müssen diese Chips dann auch gekühlt werden. Light does not experience this kind of resistance or hardly any when it spreads. Photonische Chips, dadurch dass Licht einfach natürlich propagiert und das auch weitestgehend reibungsfrei, ähm, haben keine Abwärme. Since cooling is not necessary, photonic chips are significantly more energy efficient. Und wir haben mittlerweile schon Chips bei uns auf Einzelchip-Basis gezeigt, bei der man an die natürliche Materialabsorptionsgrenze kommt. Mhm. Das heißt, das ist das, was das Material einfach von sich aus absorbiert. Und da reden wir dann um Fraktale von Prozenten, was dann auf so einem Chip verloren geht. Data transport is therefore virtually loss free. Photonic chips are significantly more powerful in this respect. Multiple pieces of information can be processed in parallel in the light waves. This again makes use of the properties of waves. Information can be stored for example in the amplitude, phase shift or polarization and all at the same time. You can also perform several calculations at the same time. To do this you can use light of several wavelengths for example. This makes photonic chips extremely interesting for use in neural networks, so in the field of AI. Just to remind you, within seven years the power consumption of data centers could more than quadruple. And this is probably also, or mostly, due to AI. Neural networks use complicated mathematical methods. And that costs a lot of energy, but photonic chips would need 1000 times less energy for some of the same calculations. In addition, conventional electronic chips process and calculate data sequentially. Using light instead would allow data to be processed in parallel, saving time, in other words, light calculates faster. And that seems to be paying off. Aus unserer Überzeugung heraus, wird äh, photonisches Prozessieren, insbesondere im Kontext von KI, in den nächsten fünf Jahren ein substanziellen integraler Bestandteil der Hochleistungsrechenzentren werden. These photonic chips harness the effects of quantum physics and this is an area that will have a massive impact on our future. Keyword data security. Quantum physics will have a huge influence here and revolutionize our current encryption methods. Well, to this point, it's no surprise that Michael Furch himself believes in the technology and of course you always have to keep that in mind when reporting on such topics. But as you know, I'm always very transparent about the sources for my videos, which means that for every statement made here in the video, you will always find the sources listed below and also here in the picture so you can compare it. And it really must be said that Quant from Stuttgart has actually achieved a breakthrough. They have developed an NPU or native processing unit as they call it. This is exactly the same as a photonic processor. It is said to consume 30 times less energy than conventional processors and be 50 times faster. That's incredible. According to Quant, the figures refer to training of a neural network with images and only to one processor. If you scale this up and have several of these processors in a server, you can save even more energy, mainly because you don't need cooling. 
Ähm, wenn wir beispielsweise in den ganzen Schaltschrank heutiger Grafikkarten gegenüber unserer Systeme dann in, ähm, in zwei Jahren vergleichen, dann haben wir einen Energievorteil von fast einem Faktor 100. And it's also incredible. Quant was only founded in 2018 and the photonic processors were already available for purchase by the end of 2024. The crazy thing is, according to the company, this is the first commercially available photonic processor. It could be used for example for mathematical models, AI training, physics simulations and machine learning. In the coming years, the company aims to produce 1000 wafers per year. These are essentially the raw materials for the chips. So right now they are launching a pilot line, so a small quantity of chips to test the industrial manufacturing process. The processor is even supposed to be compatible with existing hardware and software and can be combined with other AI software components. And that's really cool because that used to be a problem with photonic chips. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited and it shows, in my opinion, once again how much innovation is still happening here in Germany. But to understand the whole thing even better, we need to take a closer look at the quant chip itself. They consist of lithium niobate, which is applied in thin layers to silicon. This lithium niobate serves as an optical waveguide, so basically it acts as a transport medium for light. A laser then sends light into the waveguide. Certain optical components manipulate the light there, a beam splitter then allows the photons to enter other optical waveguides and interact with the other photons, for example through interference. This interaction can then be used to perform complex calculations. The information can then be read from the interference pattern. Finally, the optical signal must be converted back into electrical signals. This is actually an important point which will we come back to later. But first let's take a look at the advantages of the processor. According to the company, it should be significantly faster and more energy efficient than electronic chips. According to Quant, the processor requires only one optical component for complex mathematical calculations, while conventional chips require millions of transistors. Another advantage, according to the company, is the production of the chip. This could be quite simple with the help of all chip production facilities from the 1990s. The reason the optical chips do not rely on miniaturization. Licht hat eine nimmt einen bestimmten Raum ein. Das kann ich physikalisch auch nicht kleiner bauen. Ich kann Licht nicht auf 30 Nanometer Strukturen einsperren. Das wird immer irgendwo im 300 Nanometer Bereich bleiben. Conventional electronic chips consist of increasingly smaller structures. The conductors between the transistors are now just 12 nanometers long. That's 6000 times thinner than a human hair. A chip the size of a fingertip can now hold 60 billion transistors. And that's pretty important, it increases the performance of the chips, makes them more energy efficient and faster. With optical chips, that's not necessary and simply not possible. However, according to Furch, this is not a problem because it is possible to work with the different properties of light. For example, it is possible to calculate with the different frequencies and with that keep up with the computing densities of digital chips. Another important point is, Quant is of course not the only company researching such photonic chips. In fact, there's quite a lot of research being done in this area. Already two and a half years ago, I made a video about light intelligence optical chip on my German channel. The company is focusing more on a combination or supplement to electronic chips. Their technology also seems to be close to market launch. Light Intelligence even advertises that its technology is more than 800 times faster than conventional chips, at least for certain tasks. And MIT has also developed a photonic chip. And in general, there are quite a few startups in this field. However, optical chips have not yet really caught on. This is because they also have some disadvantages. And as always, we will take a look at these in the big hurdle of the video, that is the part in every of my videos where we look at the limitations of an innovation, just like you would do in a scientific paper. But before that, click on subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any more videos and support this channel. Okay, let's take a look at the limitations. Until now, analog computing has been associated with large errors. The larger the photonic circuits, so the path and property changes that light passes through, the greater the errors. According to Michael Furch, this inaccuracy arises during transfer to digital memory. This then causes noise in the signal. However, Quant appears to have significantly reduced the error rate of its photonic chips, more precisely to four decimal places. However, this is still significantly worse than a mobile phone processor, which has 15 to 16 decimal places. Here's an example. When recognizing handwritten numbers, the Quant processor had an accuracy rate of 95%. Digital calculators achieve 99.4%. 
Nevertheless, the error appears to have been reduced to such an extent that the processor can be used. According to Furch, this is mainly due to the material used named lithium niobate. This allows light to be controlled very precisely and noise to be reduced. This opens up many areas of application. Spannenderweise ist es aber so, dass alle Rechenoperationen, die beispielsweise im Kontext von künstlicher Intelligenz eingesetzt werden, eigentlich genau mit dieser geringeren Rechengenauigkeit sehr gut auskommen und damit zu 100% von dem Geschwindigkeitsvorteil profitieren. In other areas, such as finance, however, the error rate is still too high, making the optical chip unusable. So far, there's definitely still a trade-off between the accuracy and the speed, or energy efficiency. And depending on the area of application, one or the other is more important. Another important point in the big hurdle is once again the issue of efficiency. Optical signals still have to be converted back into electrical signals and vice versa. I already mentioned this briefly. After all, a large part of our technology is digital and electronic. Above all, data is usually not stored optically today. And that also applies to quant chips, of course. This raises a question of how energy efficient the computers are overall and how complex the conversion is. We asked Michael Furch about this and he doesn't see it as a major problem. This is because, unlike digital computers, there is no intermediate storage. We have at the beginning a long Langzeit speicher sitzen, processing then out of this speicher, uh, wandeln the ganze analog photonisch um, ziehen the complete berechnung ohne zwischenspeichern durch and speichern das endergebnis then wieder im speicher up. This saves energy because power is always consumed during storage. It remains to be seen how big the impact will ultimately be. The market launch of the Quant processor also shows that the company seems to have at least solved the basic problems. Whether the processors are good enough to establish themselves on the market remains to be seen. Finally, as I've already indicated, it must be said that Quant faces competition. Other manufacturers, such as Light Intelligence, are also planning to launch a photonic chip. In general, a lot of research is being done in this area and optical computers are very promising. So there is a lot of movement, what is pretty cool in my eyes. Okay, there's one last question I of course also had to ask because I know it will probably come up in the comments. Will we also use optical chips at home, for example for gaming or for work? Das ist aber technologisch noch einige Jahre in der Zukunft. Technisch ist das Ganze durchaus vorstellbar, die Frage ist aber, ob der Endanwender es tatsächlich braucht. I personally think that the computers of the futures will be largely cloud-based anyway and that devices at home will probably mainly serve to connect to the cloud. In my opinion, the technology is therefore not particularly interesting for private use at this stage, but it could still have a major impact on our lives and on the issue of internet energy consumption. Another technology that could have a major impact on our lives is one in the sector of medicine and I made a video about it and you can find it here, so click on it and of course please subscribe so you support this channel and I say Auf Wiedersehen, which is goodbye in German.